What is up my Squirtleites, it is I, your king. Before I start today's video, I just want to say one quick thing. F Microsoft. And now that that is out of the way, you guys hopefully will understand that I am not trying to shill out for Microsoft. I am not trying to promote them in any way, and they are certainly not paying me for this video. God forbid they'd actually want to pay me. I'm really small. And not to mention I wouldn't take the deal anyway because Microsoft is notorious for giving really weird and shady deals to content creators in the past anyway. So, with all of that said, my decree is that the Xbox Game Pass is a far and away the best deal that the video game industry has to offer. And I guess you could also put in parentheses as of current, because that could always be subject to change. Maybe another company comes up with a competitive offer, although I see that as a little less likely than Microsoft actually just making the Game Pass a worse deal over time, but I digress. As of this video, the Game Pass is an excellent deal. It is, in my opinion, a no-brainer at this point for pretty much anybody with any sort of monetary standing. If you have access to an Xbox One, there is no reason you should not have the Game Pass. It is a phenomenal deal in so many different ways, and I'm going to talk about why. First things first, when it comes to budget. If somebody were to come to me and say, I have $300 and I want to get myself or, or get my kid a new video game console, I would 10 times out of 10 recommend that they get an Xbox One and a Game Pass to go with it. Here's why. What does $300 get you with a Switch? It, well, with the new price updates, basically gets you the console and then maybe one game. No pro controller, no additional accessories, one game. If it's a first party game, it has to be on sale a little bit. That's all that $300 is going to get you. PlayStation 4. You can, if you get lucky, get a PS4 for about $200, bucks, but they're usually around $220 to $250 still. So again, even though PlayStation 4 games tend to he, see price cuts more, and there is the Classics Collection, you could probably get away with the console in maybe two, three, maybe four games. What does the Game Pass get you with Xbox for under $300? Well, it gets you an entire year at least, you know, you could always accrue more money later, but at least a year's worth of access to over 250 different games and your Xbox One, which that immediately sounds better, but of course the skeptics will come in and say, well, what does Microsoft have to offer? Because obviously they don't have any good first party titles, which Sure, while that might be true, regardless of what console you're playing them on, third-party titles are still third-party titles. They're still games. They still qualify as games. If you're getting just one console, it doesn't matter which one you're playing them on. Third-party games still matter. And yes, the Game Pass is chock full of first-party games. In fact, all first-party Xbox games always end up on Game Pass as soon as they release, which is another incentive. Even if those, quote-unquote, also end up on PC, you still have access to those games within the cost of the Game Pass itself. Now, I don't want to spend this entire video just reading this list of games on Game Pass that I have compiled to give you guys an idea of how much good stuff is on here, but it is going to take up a sort of a bulk portion of the video. Before we get into that, I want to remove the idea that the Game Pass automatically makes up for a lot of Microsoft's other sins in the past because I don't I don't want to brush any of that under the rug. I don't you know talking about the Xbox Live service, talking about all the monetization and stuff that Xbox does. That is its own completely separate discussion that we can absolutely have and I do think is important when remembering who you are quote unquote supporting, although I've said many times that supporting any console manufacturer is an idiotic idea in general, but it is worth mentioning and worth remembering just in case Microsoft does make a change. They hike up the price of Game Pass, or they start taking a bunch of stuff off of Game Pass, or they start making Game Pass into tiers, which is totally something I could see them doing, where you only have access to certain games at certain tiers and have to pay more to get higher tiers. Or they try to get sneaky with the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, where right now you can get it with Xbox Live, which is also a fantastic deal in its own right, but they could always make that more expensive or justify making the entire thing more expensive over time. There are so many different ways that Microsoft could go about this, and it's worth being skeptical. It's always worth being cautious and seeing where Microsoft takes this. But if we compare this to other services like PlayStation Now, for instance, first thing you need to understand about Game Pass is it's not a streaming service. Like, you have instant access. Well, I guess as instant as downloading the game is, although that's true with a game you even buy, as instant as downloading the game is, you have access to that game, and it is on your hard drive. It doesn't need to 
hook up to any sort of cloud service. It doesn't need to run off of Microsoft's awful servers and none of that stuff. You download the game, it's on your hard drive and it stays there and that's it. And on top of that, in the event that, and this has happened sometimes, but it doesn't happen very often, in the event that a game gets removed from Game Pass, it will still stay on your hard drive until it's deleted. Much the same way a game that you buy or and pay for that eventually gets delisted stays on your hard drive forever and you have it as long as you don't delete it. So that's pretty cool. On top of that, should you ever want to cancel Game Pass at any time, or, but you still want to keep certain games, another cool benefit about Game Pass is that in owning it, every single game that is on the service is also offered for purchase at a discount. Now this discount isn't ever something too incredibly huge, but the discount is permanent and it's usually anywhere between, I want to say like 20 to 50% off. It, I think I may have seen a couple of games that might be cheaper, but I'm pretty sure that's about the range, 20 to 50% off. You're able to buy the game if you want to actually keep it and get rid of Game Pass later, and then you have that game permanently at a discount, which, I mean, if you wanted to splurge on a bunch of Game Pass games, buy Game Pass for one month, then basically you're buying into a discount where you can then buy a bunch of games and then not renew it. I mean, there's so many different ways to go about it, but it still allows you to accrue this very large library of games. Now, what is in this library, you might ask? What would compel me to want to buy into Game Pass when I look at PlayStation 4 and its amazing exclusive and Nintendo's amazing exclusives. And don't get me wrong, if you're the kind of person that cares about exclusives the most, yes, you should probably be buying a Switch or a PlayStation 4. Don't really get into Xbox. But if you're somebody who just wants to consume everything, you're not really a person that prefers any one sort of genre, you like to play pretty much any video game. I mean, especially if you're like a casual consumer who is just into whatever's kind of the hit at the time, most of the third party titles out there, which plenty of people are. I mean, there's a reason that those games break the millions and the tens of millions every single time they, they're sold. But if you're into that kind of thing, Game Pass is perfect. And not to mention, it does have a lot of other niche titles. Let's start with some of the AAA titles for your average layman, for the person that is kind of a casual gamer and buys based off of brand recognition, okay? You have access to all five Gears of War games as well as Judgment, I believe. You have access to Batman Arkham Knight, Merlin's Shadow of Mordor and War, both of which are the definitive editions, Quantum Break, all the Dead Islands, Metro Exodus 2033 Redux and Last Light Redux, Resident Evil 4, Devil May Cry 5, Metal Gear Solid 5, the entire Rare Replay library, Lego City Undercover, Borderlands The Handsome Collection, Every Halo game you can think of, yes, even Spartan Assault, all of them, the Halo Wars, Halo 1 through 5, Master Chief Collection, etc., Reach, they're all there. Valkyria Chronicles, Forza Horizon 3 and 4, Shadow Warrior 2, Sea of Thieves, Minecraft, Alien Isolation, the Mega Man X Legacy Collection 2, yes, I'm still counting that as AAA because that is made by Capcom, Mortal Kombat X, Monster Hunter World, Just Cause 3 and 4, Wolfenstein 1 and 2, Human Fall Flat, State of Decay 1 and 2, Fallout 4, Prey, the Tomb Raider Definitive Edition, as well as Rise of the Tomb Raider and Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Vampire, Doom, Sunset Overdrive, and Deus Ex Mankind Divided. That's just the AAA titles. Let's get into a bunch of other notable games that aren't necessarily AAA, but still too many people are considered excellent games. And this is an even longer list. Ready? Kingdom Come Deliverance, Dead Cells, Worms WMD, All the Walking Deads, Life is Strange 1 and 2, The Bard's Tale Trilogy, Ark, Survival Evolved, Abzu, Outer Wild, Super Hot, Max, The Curse of Brotherhood, Rhyme, Darksiders 1 and 2, Shantae, Half Genie Hero, City Skylines, Terraria, Wandersong, Killer Instinct 1 and 2, as well as Killer Instinct Classic, Absolver, Ashen, What Remains of Edith Finch, Fez, Sinner, Sacrifice for Redemption, Tacoma, Below, The Messenger, Record, Ori and the Blind, Forest, Brothers of Tale of Two Sons, Hollow Knight, Hotline Miami, Oxenfree, Operencia, The Stolen Sun, West of Loathing, Undertale, Torment, Tides of Numeria, Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice, Guacamelee 1 and 2, PUBG, Thimbleweed Park, and Payday 2. And yes, there are also some Xbox 360 games as well as a singular Xbox game that are worth noting as well. Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3 HD, Braid, Fallout 3 and New Vegas, Saints Row 3, Mass Effect, Elder Scrolls Oblivion, Metal Slug 3 and X, Fable Anniversary, yes, that's all of the fables, Rage, and then for the lone Xbox game is Ninja Gaiden Black. That is just a crap ton of games, and those are just the ones that I thought were worth mentioning. There are still plenty of other games that you can explore, some of which might be hidden gems that I just personally don't even recognize the names of, but... If I missed any, you can just go look up online, look at the list of Xbox Game Pass games, and if for some reason nothing on that entire list impressed you, which I am willing to bet if you have any vested interest in video games, at least a dozen of everything that I named is going to have some sort of vested interest, you know, assuming you haven't played them all. 
even if that's the case, you can go look up the list online and there's still plenty of other games. I mean, there's one I didn't even mention that I personally like playing because I have a passion for really silly hunting games and that's called The Hunter Call of the Wild. And as far as hunting games go, that is the best one that has like ever been made. It is superbly put together with excellent maps, excellent attention to detail. I mean, it just goes above and beyond where a hunting game really doesn't need to go. So... That's And that's just one example of plenty of other hidden gems that I felt like maybe didn't even need to be mentioned because a lot of people might not recognize them or even I didn't recognize them, but they're on there. I mean, like I said, there's almost 250 games on this service. It's just crazy to me, and it's also extended to PC now, where owning it gives you access to a plenty of these games on PC. And although I will say that the current selection on PC, at least at the moment, is kind of lacking considering they just announced the PC Game Pass back during E3 a few months ago, there are some notable games such as How to Full Boyfriend and then a few of the games that I named before that are also available on PC as well as the Age of Empires 1 and 2 Definitive Editions and there's some other ones out there that I just can't really think of off the top of my head. But regardless... Just a huge, huge library that is immediately accessible for either 10 bucks a month, 60 bucks a year, or if you want to get the Ultimate Edition, it's 15 bucks a month. And not to mention, they always have all these sorts of offers where you can buy into it very briefly for like a dollar a month, two dollars for two months. You know, these very cheap short-term deals that you can at least try out Game Pass for this pretty nice trial period and just give all of the games a shot and see how it all runs and see the service. And I, I, I just, I can't recommend it enough. And... It is really the one thing that I have been able to praise Microsoft for over the last several years, and pretty much ever. Just this idea, this this very simple idea that so many game companies are just so afraid to buy into, to just give us a service where we can get to all of their games for a very nominal fee and play them to our heart's content on our own console. We're not having to back all of this up on some sort of cloud cert data server somewhere. We're not having to give all of our information to these companies and just kind of hope that their servers work so that we can actually play the games we want to play. It's none of that garbage. It's so simple. It's just a download service, It's and it's so easy. It's exactly what Netflix for games should be. And again, regardless of my opinion on Microsoft themselves, as you, the consumer, the person who is listening to this video, and anyone else who cares about video games, it's important that we actually take advantage of something like this, but also that we educate others on this. I get that there is a large, large anti-Microsoft bias out there, and trust me, I am on the same side. But I said this back during one of the very first, I think it was the very first episode of the decree that I said that having an informed and educated discussion on video games does everyone a service. There is no point in trying to just pull the wool over someone else's eyes and just screwing them over for no reason. No, you don't need to do that. If somebody genuinely wants to know what is the best deal for me right now, what is the best bang for my buck, seriously, show them the Game Pass. Even if you have no vested interest in it whatsoever, you might be able to make somebody's day. You might be able to give them access to a lot of great things that they never would have otherwise known about. And honestly, what's wrong with that? We should try to make everyone else's lives easier. We should try to help each other out. I mean, it's such a simple thing. I mean, I have I know that I have personally explained the Game Pass to do several people and piqued their interest. And even if they didn't buy into it, at least I'm educating them on the subject. At least I'm giving them the information with which they can then go out and make their decision. It's such a simple thing to do. And sometimes we just need to step out of our bubble and remember that there are millions and millions of gamers out there who enjoy games differently than we do. So go out there, inform, educate, and remember, the Xbox Game Pass is, at least as of right now, the absolute best deal that the video game industry has to offer.